Hello, say hi to a happy day and enjoy listening while I read to you a story. Merida's challenge. Merida couldn't stop laughing. You three wee brains think you can climb the crones' tooth? The crones' tooth was the tallest mountain around. Only the biggest and bravest people have climbed it, including me, she continued. Don't even try. Here is Hubert and Hamish's cow. Of course, they would give it a try. They were big and brave too. They had to prove it to Merida. As they stood at the foot of the towering rock, Harris and Hubert weren't so sure it was a good idea. But Hamish was ready. I'll show her, he said to his brothers. They gave him a boost, but he struggled to find handholds in the slippery rock. A little way up the rock Hamish was standing on fell away. He was left dangling by his fingertips. Harris and Hubert hurried to fetch Merida. They found her on the castle and told her what had happened to Hamish at the crones' tooth. Oh no, cried Merida. What have I done? I didn't really mean you should try to climb it yourself. Come on, we have to get Angus. But Merida was so worried she couldn't think straight. Where are my arrows? She cried to her brothers. Fortunately, Hubert was one step ahead of her, and he tossed them to his sister. When they got to Angus in the stables, Merida was still worried. They wouldn't make it to the crones' tooth in time to save Hamish. I'm all thumbs, Merida said. I'll never get this brittle on. Harry, Harry's quickly helped his sister get ready to ride. Soon they were galloping toward the crones' tooth. Faster, Angus, Merida urged. Faster! Hamish was still hanging on when they arrived, but barely. He kicked the wall, trying to find a foothold. Something blue caught Merida's eyes. Wisp! I should have known. She called out to her brother. Hold on, Hamish. Please hold on. Merida scanned the trees around the clearing. Quick, Harris, Hubert, gather as many fallen leaves as you can. I have an idea. Soon they had formed a large pile under Hamish. Merida looped a rope around her waist and knotted it tightly. She tied the end to an arrow. Stepping back, she sent the arrow flying over the high branch of a tree. Then, Harris hurried to fetch the arrow from the ground and tied the rope to Angus's saddle. Angus, Merida said, walk up that hill. The branch groaned as Angus pulled the rope taut. Everyone held their breath. Keep pulling slowly, Merida said. The branch groaned again. The rope began to hoist Merida into the air. Fragments of rock padded down and Hamish began to lose his grip. Just a wee bit longer, Hamish, yelled Merida. Ignore those wisps. Finally, Merida was high enough to grab her brother. I've got you, Merida laughed, hugging him tightly. Angus, you can start walking backward now. Angus slowly lowered Merida and Hamish over the pile of leaves. When she was sure it was safe, Merida dropped Hamish on the leaves. The rescue mission was a success. How brave you all were, Merida said to her brothers. You, Hamish, for hanging in there so long, and you, Harris and Hubert, for being so calm and reliable all through the rescue. But the triplets had one more thought of their minds. As the wisp flew away to cause mischief elsewhere, the brothers crossed their arms and looked to their sister. Okay, okay, Merida said laughing. I promise I won't question your bravery again. The end. I hope you enjoy listening to the story, Merida's Challenge. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and listen to more of our favorite book stories. See you soon!